Well, how are you doing? What, what, um, yeah, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Matt. And um, I really admire you for taking the time to promote all these wonderful missions we are all on. So That's my, my pleasure. I'm looking forward to it. We've known each other now for a, a couple of years, I think it may be, through the, um, you know, the work I was doing before and, and now with Biochar Life, which is kind of connected. So uh, before I, we jump into all the questions, um, yeah, just share for our audience a bit more about yourself, um, what you're doing and, and Climate Net, of course. Sure. Um, I guess um, I'm an ex-business uh, executive and I got uh, a bit burned by corporate life. It was about profit, profit, profit and people, people, people. And I think the reality check, just to share a personal story, is I was working in New York in finance, the music business. And we, you know, we were asked to basically reduce cost and headcount. A headcount is on a piece of spreadsheet, a FTE, a number. And then I realized that by reducing the FTE, which means, you know, basically firing people, um, the, the cost of, uh, you know, we're firing one person and the cost of her salary was actually the price of the senior executive or chairman or CEO flying Concorde at the time. And if you remember the very expensive mm. short flight, because he only wanted to be in seat in the seat 1A of the Concorde, and that was the cost of one employee full-time salary. So I just got completely disconnected thinking, how on earth you know, can we fire one person? I mean, it sounds like idealistic, but, you know, um, so, and then you know, I moved from finance in, to new media at the time, which music business, um, and I discovered a startup like uh, Shazam or, you know, and I got really in, engaged with startups. Um, still trying to find a new model. And then I discovered in the early 2000s um, the uh, what is social enterprise model, and I got passionate about it. And so since then, I've become a kind of a start founder with failures and successes. And the guy, I would say, uh, uh, yeah, a passionate social entrepreneur. And uh, now environment is my passion. So that's why I'm here. Cool. So cli- Climate Net, yeah, let, talk to us about – so obviously I'm on, on your app. I've, I've watched you guys – uh, I was building a startup at the same time, so we were in very similar phases and, and I've kind of watched you guys grow and now launch and uh, I'm on the app and, uh, you know, a startup is a startup for some time. I suppose you'd still call yourselves a startup with where you're at, but um, yeah, talk to us about Climate Net, what it is, how it works, um, what it's all about. Yeah. First, I need to explain is Climate Net with a K. So if people find us, they have to put a K, not a C. Um, so I, again, I've been a social entrepreneur for 20 years in different uh, set and form. Uh, one of the last one was trying to, in energy efficiency, trying to convince people to retrofit their home to, to, to save energy. Because the, the cheaper energy is the one you'd actually don't don't consume. Um, and I realized after 20 years in this uh, sustainability network or zone, that there were very, very few professionals who were aware and interested and knew about how exciting it is to really um, start the journey in trying to address climate change and also how much money is there for them. So uh, as a, you know, professionally and personally, it's an amazing uh, way to be successful. But very few people know about it because most people are in the, I would say, the linear, linear um, economy industries. And I realized for me, business and good business is about people meeting at the same time at the right place for the right reason. And people were spending a lot of money traveling around the world in these big conferences, um, listening to speakers uh, on the stage, not able to really interact. Uh, the conference model is the more people you get, the better, which is actually for me is bad because then you don't have quality. So you meet a lot of people, but not the right people. You end up with lots of business cards or LinkedIn, but you're completely overwhelmed. You don't know who is who, who's going to help you. And the person you meet now may be helpful in six months' time, not now, or might have been helpful six months earlier. So I realized, why don't we create a network that can be like a dating app, but not for sentimental or whatever, but for climate change projects? Because if people are meeting on an app, you know, to play tennis, to do other things, why can't they meet, you know, quickly, help them save time, money, avoiding flying around the, the world and burning carbon. Uh, so that's why I thought, well, we should do something like that. But I was, that was early on, that was 2016, and I guess it was, tech was not there. 
Um, I mean, the tech was there for sentimental dating, but maybe not for climate change. <laughs> and then I met uh, for a long, lot of sorry during COVID. I met at um, uh, through an incubator in, in Cambridge, Carbon Thirteen. I met uh, Sandeep Krishnapa, who is an amazing uh, mix of software engineer from India, from Bangalore, and who is a pa- passionate about mm-hmm. building digital communities. And uh, and he said that makes sense. Let's build a digital community for climate change. And that's why we created Climate Net uh, in 2021. And now we have the app uh, where people can sign up for free and uh, meet each other um, based on their needs and their offer. So in Climate Net, basically, we offer people the opportunity to share and learn together, to find jobs, to find expertise, to find projects and create or expand their project to remove carbon emissions, to find funding and investors. And um, and uh, without any vested interest in it, we just pay a, people just pay a membership fee to be part of it. And we're also disrupting the the event, uh, I say, industry by organizing very qualitative events. So only a few people come; could be from five to ten to fifteen to twenty max. But the theme are very specific, and the speakers and the parties. It's a it's an interactive event. So there's no like a speaker on the stage and. Uh, and someone listening to them. It's everybody's on the end floor. And whether you're the head of sustainability of Amazon or AWS, um, because we do events with them, or whether we're just a, a young student, student starting to think about moving from accounting to carbon accounting, you do talk at the same level. And that's why it creates a difference. We want to break this barrier about because you have a, a kind of a stamp on your head that you're part of that corporate or startup founder, you're different people. Mm. So, and it's, it's really, really successful because people really um, find what they need and can talk directly to people and it, it fastens the business and relationship. I hope it makes sense. I'm just it, so it passionate does, about it. It, it does make sense. And actually, I, I, I'm, and I, I want us to drill down, obviously, into the environmental pieces. But before I do, uh, I'm interested to know, uh, so uh, paraphrasing back to you, I mean, yeah, it's about community. I love your idea about you know, kind of disrupting events because, yeah, through my career, I've been to numerous events and though good things have come out of them, you know, 99% of the time you're just grabbing business cards and you're not really creating valuable connections. So I I think, you know, that is a a really great idea and solves a real problem. Um, But in terms of your startup journey, I'm interested as well. Um, You know, you'd, you'd obviously thought of this way before, the kind of lockdown scenario that we went through and then you worked right the, through the lockdown scenario building a startup did you found did that kind of aid what you were you're building did it help did it hinder I'm, I'm interested whether that had a, a positive effect in any way because you were building a digital community at a time where actually everyone was really focused on being digital because of the way because of the situation we were in yeah, and I'm ready to say that because I really think we, I wish we had avoided the pandemic. Mm. But it's true that when I had this idea of that app in 2016, people say, "Oh no, nobody's going to really connect," you know, through video. It was still a, what it was called, uh, uh, Skype. No, That's right. Skype? Yeah, it yeah. Skype, Skype. Skype seems almost like a distant memory now, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like... A bit like blackberries, you know. Uh, so, so um, because it was one thing to have the app, but people still need to communicate through, you know, like we're doing today through video calls. So it's through that, and um, and also the technology has evolved so much. And also, there's one angle I want to explain, if I may. Sorry, I'm, yep. I'm prompting the questions. Go for it. Um, there, there are a lot of networks for professionals on climate change. Lots of them, and they're really, really good. But uh, the reason I create, we created ClimateNet is we, we did a real uh, analysis of all of them. Most of them are created by very famous people that are very high profile, uh, whether they're King, King Charles or Elon Musk or Schwarzenegger or Schwarzenegger, you know, and they all have kind of a, a follower and a lead and people follow the leader. Um, so they're really good networks and some of them funds project, but they are limited because they're centralized around the leader. And there's so much the leader can make. And, you know, some of them are a lot of money, but they're all kind of localized or national. There's no, I don't know if you can tell me, Matt, do you know any global network where people connect safely and securely for climate change? I, no, I don't. I am trying to think. I mean, there are, like you say, there are networks everywhere and then there are climate change or environmentally focused 
communities within those networks, but not any that, you know, where there's a kind of dedicated area as such. So, for example, we have uh, members who, you know, for whatever reason, they want to buy a forest, you know, they've been yeah. successful, or they have a super innovative idea in new batteries without lithium. And when they try to find where to get expertise, where to get funders, I mean, they all go on LinkedIn, but they're lost in translation there. They spend a lot of time. They go to conferences, but they don't meet the right people. Um, and there's no, like, one place to go. And then what you have to do is to connect to all these different networks and then you don't know the network that is in Bangladesh or in Uruguay. So that's why we created um, uh, Climate Ed. And it, the idea is it has to be decentralized. Yeah. So we are just a facilitator. And it's a new idea, and that's what Sandy brought in, um, is that the members should be the active active themselves. We're not going to deliver all the services I described. The member have to meet there and just do their own thing together. And they have to create this project. They have to, I mean, they have to, they want to, and they benefit from it, from getting businesses, meeting clients and, and, and suppliers. But we're just offering the hub, the platform, the connection. And what we offer is security. It's all secure and safe and based on trust. Because unfortunately, there are a lot of people, because it's a new area, there's lots of innovation. Um, people, it's like a peer to peer. People benchmark each other. So for example, you're running by your child life, you know, Farmers are using a paralysis system. You know, is it the right one? You know, are they actually doing the right thing? You can always find someone within ClimateNet who would recommend you, benchmark you, say, yes, you're doing a great job or you could improve. And it's based mm. on sharing and learning, um, which, which then makes people much more open and transparent uh, because you don't want the trillions of dollars that can be spent on climate change projects to go to the wrong projects. Mm. I hope that makes sense. It does. I, I have a question. Obviously, you guys are work, working with blockchain, as I was, and you're talking about yeah. this decentralized element to um, how you build your community. There's always a danger, I think, when you start talking about this stuff that when I think of, say, a professional, that maybe it's a sustainability manager, someone that would be you know, ultimately your customer, your community member. How do you present that to them? Because often talking about things like blockchain and decentralization just kind of, you know, does this. But let, uh, yeah, when you talk to the value to a member coming in, um, a professional in the climate net network, what, yeah, what, what is the kind of value proposition to them in terms of this type of community versus what they would traditionally know as a group on say LinkedIn or yeah. Okay. So again, we're very disrupting, which is the point of a startup, but we basically recognize that also a lot of people are doing great things in on project, but because what they do is either technical or not known or in the middle of nowhere in, in another country, um, it's not recognized and um, it's not valued. Mm. So we created, and we never really talk about blockchain tokens. We talk about uh, recognition. So we have we're using a, a kind of an element of recognition of impact through what we call the community scores. So if you're an active member and you contribute uh, by sharing and learning your expertise as a speaker or, you know, um, you know, allowing or, you know, being willing to welcome some of our members to visit your project um, or, you know, creating a project, uh, finding a co-founder, like if you're active in the network, you, you actually earn this community scores. And this, it's not someone vating or liking you and say, oh, you're a great guy. It's yeah. actually by yeah. action. And we are forward thinking, our vision is that in five years time, if you want to be recognized as, as a contributor to climate change, people will recognize these scores more than your CV, more than the fact that you've, you know, you've attended the Sustainability Institute or whatever university. It's what have you actually done? And our vision is that in five years' time, because global warming and climate change is going to be such an urgent problem, a bit like we had the pandemic hitting us, that people will everywhere look for solutions. And they will look for solutions and think, who can give me solutions to my problem? Mm -hmm. Like I'm polluting, whatever. And they will look in climate net and they will say, okay, Matt has been working on biochar for 10 years. He has, I don't know, southern scores. He knows about biochar. He can help me really, you know, benchmark my biochar project or I can invest in his project. 
So we very we want to create basically the impact scores about professional be recognized for their contribution. Um, and it is done through uh, you know yeah tokenomics, but I don't we don't want to really talk about that. That's no, that's, but the the point is, and I do yeah I, I love the idea. I think yeah rating systems are not a new idea, but decentralized rating systems are a much newer idea. And I love that yeah if you go forward five years, what you don't want is just an industry body cropping up and then yeah there are needs for that yeah but i love this idea of yeah it's just a, a a an organic process that happens in a decentralized way so that five years from now you can go into that community and understand where the knowledge is you know who are the experts in a way that you know hasn't been um you know hasn't hasn't been influenced in any way other than as part of the process so yeah yeah, it is. It is. That's the point. It is not vested. There's no nobody sponsoring us, um, and also we created that because after all these years in in, in sustainability, so many experts are not recognised. They're lost in translation. They yeah. talk at thousands of of conferences, but then people forget about them, and actually don't know where to find them. Or um, so also also to to really value the contribution. And it's not just expert. It can be actually a graphic designer building a fantastic design for a fantastic, you know, a project. So it's, it's that's what I'm saying. Recognition is not just about people who necessarily are technical people, but also people can contribute um, by lots. It can be rewarded accountant, HR people who do a great job on projects as well. Cool. So Makes you'll have sense. to stop. The no, I, it's I good. We're here to talk about it. So it's good. Um, you, I know it's, it's, you know, your community is starting to build, um, and you would somewhat have your finger on the pulse in terms of what are the interests and uh, in terms of that community. Can you give us an idea of, you know, when you look at the network, you're starting to build the professionals that are in there, you know, what are the key topics that, uh, and that might be broad, I realize, but maybe there's some things you can talk about in terms of what you're, you're hearing from those communities in terms of the interest, things they want to know about around climate change. Very fascinating. So what keeps me going every day is the fact that I really had this vision of a global network to connect people because it's a global problem. And the solution you have in Pakistan may be helpful for Uruguay in a different shape or form or, you know, or France in, in Italy, whatever. And I'm fascinating. Every day we have people from all over the world connecting. I mean, nobody knows me. I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, Kate Moss or whoever. And nobody knows us. And there is this huge need. And the, just for you to know, for example, recently, someone from Bangladesh, because we always ask, we vet people. So when people don't, you know, it's not for, we vet people. He's, he's uh, we say, why do you want to join Climate Net? He says, save Sundabar. And I didn't know, Sundabar is the biggest mangrove area in the world based in Bangladesh that is actually being polluted by lots of chemicals. Mm. And I'm thinking, when someone from Bangladesh who doesn't know anything about me or us, goes on the platform and says, saves on the bar. I, I'm like, you know, I'm going to get all the blue carbon specialist people I know and try yeah. to connect with them, you know. So we we gather people from all over the world who, you know, mainly in, um, sorry about the jargon, you may have to explain, natural-based solutions projects. Yep. So project based on nature that absorb carbon. So we're really focusing more on a project in forestation, um, in um, you know agriculture, so regeneration and biochar, which you're working on, uh, blue carbon on the oceans, mangrove and peatlands, and also minerals. I mean, we do a lot of so in reduction, but uh, we focus more on this project. So we have 300 members from 23 countries who signed up on the app, more than 2,500 subscribers on our newsletters, and southern now followers on LinkedIn. So even though with no marketing, with very small startup with small funding. Um, I can see, for me, even if I stop here, my venture, for whatever reason, the success is I get people from all over the world sharing their needs and sharing what they can offer on that platform and helping each other for climate. So, yeah, it proves the proposition, I think. Does that makes cool sense? Stuff. Yeah, it makes sense. It's cool stuff. I, you, you asked me earlier, I don't remember the exact question, but you were asking me, do I know any secure platforms or communities for for environmental initiatives, something along those lines. But the reason I'm stating that again is I'm, I'm interested to know actually with what you guys are doing, do you see yourselves as entering a space where there isn't really any competition? And, you know, I know with competition in this space anyway, it's it's a funny thing because you ideally you want to 
a, as big a community as you can get if that takes a few platforms. But yeah, with what you guys are doing, do you see yourselves as somewhat unique in terms of an offering or do you see yourselves kind of fitting in with, with other products or, or other communities out there that are, that are cropping up around this work? Wonderful question. So um, in, our investors hate it or when we say we have no competitors. Uh, we have no competition set. We have partners. So we some of our competitors become our partners, like Terra Dato. I don't know if you know them. It's a great yep. network. Now we partner with them because we're actually offering their services to our members. We are not ourselves running the training course online on climate change, but we are suggesting our members to you know, maybe look at Terra, that, but not just Terra, maybe others and as well. We're very agnostic. We just present, you know, partners. Uh, we we partner with MCJ Climate, which is a US now UK uh, uh, network as well. Now, it's interesting in the last 18 months, a lot of new network came up for climate change. And it's mm. great because it's a global problem. We need, our mission is to get more than 25 to 30% of professionals worldwide employees or you know entrepreneurs to work on climate change project because until we get there we're not going to reduce and absorb all the 10 gigatons of carbon emissions we need to reduce per year so we're joining everyone because uh, and there's and there's lots of money to make for everyone so p- some people can be a member of climate net and pay uh, courses on terra and also find a job with leaf leafers all our partners so we partner with that's why we have you know we have a lot of partners because we have not stick to them. And it in in terms of, and I'm going to be a bit technical, in terms of strategy, it's called the Blue Ocean Strategy. It's a Harvard, uh, you know, uh, Harvard uh, University uh, kind of framework. Most of the business compete on the red, red strategy, which is competing on price and stealing each, stealing um, customers and members from each other and you know discounting on price the blue ocean strategy uh, is actually to embrace a challenge and solve a problem while embracing the partners already in there so that's what inspired me as well so we partner with most people i'd love elon musk to contact us as well and we can partner <laughs> with him but and that may even they can be very controversial some people don't like him but anyway um i shouldn't have said that sorry i, <laughs> really I, I, don't, I don't think uh my, my podcast is quite big enough to get his ears right now but you never know <laughs> <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry. So, uh, does it answer your question? It was, yes. uh, it was another point of the question, or comment? yeah, 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 that does. It does. Well, I, I mean, as a, a segue to that, I mean, this is a somewhat cheesy question, but you know, the whole kind of where do you see yourself in ten years? But I, it, it is an interesting one. I'd like to understand your vision. I suppose uh, you shared it a little bit there in terms of you know numbers, but yeah, what do you have a kind of vision of? climate net in 10 years and i assume that vision actually is about the impact that you can have as an organization it's probably something that drives your your activities every day but yeah share share a bit of that with us so just i want to summarize for people uh, to make it clear um um i don't know if it works for some some people you would speak to them if i say we we basically build in a green linkedin okay yeah that's one but for some other people we can say we're also uh building the green discord i don't know if people know about discord but it's it's it's, it's the it's discord it's one of the, yeah, yeah so the idea is you want to become in five years time the 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 only network the, only, the network to go to for everybody who's looking for a solution for climate change or want a job in climate change and be the reference point for trust and reputation and quality because there's been so much greenwashing and so many, and nothing wrong with them, but so many brokers, so many intermediaries. And I give you an example. I was yesterday at an event and there was this company that I've been following for a while, French company, a new startup called Tree App. Okay. And what they do is uh, uh, every time you sign up on their app or you do something, I don't know, they plant a tree. So for example, I was at an event yesterday. There were 50 people. They would mm. plant 50 trees. OK, so they want um, not sure exactly, you know, which actions they do, but they, they're promoting to plant trees. And I challenge them, say, where do you plant your trees? Who do you work with? Mm. I mean, um, and they say they have a bunch of experts. They're making sure the local communities are benefiting and everything. Well, if I would like Tree App to be in Climate Net, people to know about Tree App, you know, and and but also uh, people to think about Tree App and thinking, are they planting tree the right way? Can we help a tree app to plant more trees 
Can we connect Tree App to more communities? So we want to be like this kind of, you know, reference point. Like if people have a question about how to plant a tree, they go on Climate Net, they meet Tree App. Tree App also can explain what they do, but they can meet lots of others. And they can compare how to plant a tree, what is the best way to plant a tree. So that's what we want. And also people then, a professional, to have a stamp on their kind of new CV about climate, uh, climate Net scores, community scores. We want to become the reference point. So you know that Matt is a specialized by HR. And also these scores allow the members to vote on projects because we want to invest on projects. So we want ultimately to you know, uh, invest more than a million dollars in a few years' time in, in projects like yours that are vetted by the members. Mm. So I'm only going to choose to buy HR Life if my members who are active say it's a good project. Not me saying it's a good, or not a Vera or a certification agency necessarily. Cool, makes, makes sense. It, it does make, yeah, definitely. I, I, I mean, just going back to your statement there, I like, I love the kind of green LinkedIn um, comparison. I, I think that's a, a great way to look at it um, in terms of where the platform could be. Um, but also, yeah, that does make sense. And I think you know, there's a key thing here. We chatted before we started the podcast. We were talking about actually the biochar markets we're talking about pricing for carbon removal but you brought up a key piece here which is trust there's such an important element to all of this work and you know everything that's going on in terms of trust in the process because uh, we've had so much greenwashing we've had all these issues but you know this year obviously the the vera ceo stepping down and and yeah i mean how how important do you see this element of trust across the sector being uh, and access to information, to data, to understanding what's really happening and, um, you know, in terms of whether you're a corporate buying, you know, removal credits and wanting to understand the project, whether you're an individual in the community, how important is trust and and how much, what can be done to make sure there is ongoing trust around this, around the community, around the, around the industry? Well, trust is such an important factor uh, because uh, as of today, because of some issue of controversy on project, a lot of actually investors in, in project are holding on. So the money is there. The, the problem of solving climate change is not a money problem. The money yeah. is everywhere. It's where would it go? And because it went, and, and I don't think people were initially badly intentioned. They're just, we're all learning. And it's, it's, it's like technology now is also helping so much in that. And with satellites and drones and new platforms, uh, and and also clean blockchain, uh, people are learning, you know. So so now trust is so important because if the money goes into the wrong project, um, then the money is going to dry up and people are going not not invest anymore. And trust is all about people and how do you trust. So now trust is built mainly in our based on referral. So I know you, you're a friend. I know what you do. I and when someone recommends someone to someone else, it goes so much faster, you know. Um, but how do you replicate that trust factor digitally quickly? So that so, so that's why Climate Net app is about is replicating the trust we have in each other. When I introduce you, Matt, to one of our members because he wants to invest in your project, and you trust me, he trusts me or she, and so we all so there's a kind of triangle of trust, you know. So we're trying to replicate that triangle of trust through digital connection to get faster. Because by the time I call you, I call my, my, my investor member, and you know, it takes time. So the idea is on the app, we vet people. People will have these community scores, and there will be the trust factor. So that if, if an investor wants to invest in your project, they just go through the app, and they know you've been vetted, and you know you have these scores. And so that's what we're trying to replicate, to accelerate all these connections because of the urgency we have in climate. And you need this money urgently for your project, and the investor has the money ready. But if he goes to five conferences, talk to 10 people to find you, you know, it's already a year go by, and mm. that's what we do. So trust is absolutely critical. It's exactly replicating what we, they do in investment in, uh, in the finance industry when they vet people who you know, invest in, in, uh, in financial um, projects. You know? Yeah. So we want to replicate that kind of uh, same model, um, maybe through clean blockchain as well. It makes sense? Sorry. It does. Cool. Okay. Hey, look, as a, a bit of a closing question, really. Um, sure. You know, giving advice, often when you look at the, the kind of mission, um, the vast mission of 
solving climate change. It can be overwhelming. Um, and, you know, not everyone is a, an individual sitting inside a company working in a sustainability role or, you know, where they're looking at solutions every day. What advice do you give to, you know, an individual, whatever industry, um, you know, who's waking up and thinking about this challenge that we have? What, what advice to, do you give them in terms of approaching it in their everyday lives? Amazing question. Yesterday, again, at this event, I met a lady and she said, uh, lovely lady, she said, I'm looking for a new job, but I, I, I worked in procurement and operation in, in the fashion industry. So I know nothing about climate change. I want to work there, but I can't find a job. Everybody's saying to me, you know, you don't have the credentials. So she's been through a sustainability course. She said, but it's not enough. And I said, you know what? We don't need, you don't need to have any, any, any specific courses in management. You just need to um, really uh, find any project, any new company, any startup, forget the big corporate. There's lots of startup being funded and they need a procurement manager. They need a project manager. They need a graphic designer. They need a data. You don't need to be a, 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 an engineer or a consultant or biologist to find a job or a data scientist. Uh, you really need to have the passion and you will find, okay, you may not be paid the same salary, but, um, you know, you, you learn so much. And now all the new businesses I see, they need people with motivation and skills to work and understand how to work on the project, but not necessarily technical skills. I mean, of course, the technical skills are needed and people need to be trained, but you don't need to. So you don't need to be, as I said, that I fancy to find a job you can, you can find. So all of this project, and I'm sure you guys need a, graphic designer or an HR person or an accountant or always yeah. You know, so that's why we're engaging all professional and we call them the explorers in our jargon. The yeah. people who really and once they got into working for projects that have a mission and make sense, they're so excited that they actually flourish. So uh, so that's what we promote is personal and professional success um, while joining uh, you know a company that works on projects. So because these projects are going to be funded. That's what I'm saying. You know, now it's slow, but as I say, in two or three years' time, all every big business will try to fund and invest in a project that removes carbon emissions because they will have the pressure. It's still slow, but yeah. we feel like it's going to be an exponential growth from 2025 onwards. So I don't know if you agree. You can challenge me on that. I do. No, no, I do agree. And look, good advice, I think, to anyone looking to to get into yeah i mean you know the, it doesn't necessarily have to be a sustainability role there's lots of different options so um i and didn't now, sorry go go ahead. no you go no last thing i want to say is also you don't need to read thousands of reports or uh you know have a huge degree. you just need to talk to people and that's what we offer someone talking to matt you to matt for an, for half an hour will 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 teach someone much more than reading 40 pages of paper or the icpc report indeed uh, and uh, because we all learn very quickly from each other. That's also what I, I, I try to promote is talk to each other and share quickly knowledge. You, people remember more what people say than reading stuff. Yeah, and to time. be honest, who likes sitting down and reading lengthy reports? It's not the most fun. Chatting is, is way more fun. So yeah. um, I didn't have any more questions unless there's anything else you wanted to share. But also, please do share where people can learn more about yourself, about Climate Net jump on the app, yeah. get in touch. So, I just want to explain, Climate Net app is not a social media app. You're not going to see uh, article, podcast, likes. It's an app for sharing and learning specific knowledge. So people, we, members will post things on the app if they think you need to hear or listen to it. So we organize physical events in London and shortly in Paris and Munich in Germany. Uh, and we organize a lot of webinars, so you can follow us on uh, climatenet, our website, that come with a K, or you can download the app uh, for free and uh, and learn how to, um, you know, get your journey on climate change. So thank you very much, Matt. I really appreciate you took the time because you're a very, very busy man as well. <laughs> so. <laughs> sure, no worries. Thank Look, for anyone watching thank or listening, I will put those notes in the in the speaker notes so people can can click on the link and download the app or get in touch. So uh, look, okay. it was my pleasure. Um, you know, I know we're both busy. We're both in startup world. So yeah, I appreciate you also giving the time and, and, and sharing more about ClimateNet and wish you the best, the best of luck, so. Yeah, have a wonderful, wonderful evening now. Yeah, thank you. Thank cool. you. Thanks bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.